Am I the asshole for calling my wife the most beautiful woman in the world in front of her sister? I, male 29, am a doctor, and my wife, female 29, is in another high-paying field with long hours. Due to me recently having some odd hours, we really haven't seen much of each other for about a week. Anyways, her sister, female 33, has recently divorced from her husband. Her sister had an Indian-style arranged marriage and does not see the point of love marriages in general. She's taking this hard because in India, there's sadly a lot of stigma surrounding women who have divorced. So my sister has been staying with me and my wife and we're totally okay with it. She's a really nice roommate and super respectful of the rules in the house. Am I the asshole for calling my wife the most beautiful woman in the world in front of her sister? Recently, we got lucky and finally got to spend some time together. We decided to watch a movie and we're laying on the couch cuddling and sweet talking. Her sister came in the room, sat down on the other couch and watched the movie. We told each other how it was so painful to be without one another and I even grabbed her face and said she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Her sister left the room but later basically accused me of cuddling with my wife to mock the fact that she doesn't have a husband and that I implied that she wasn't beautiful. I tried to calm her but she got too close for my liking and said what makes her hotter than me. Then wanted a hug but I said no. Okay, story time. <laughs> so I work at a jewelry store and today a man came in looking for a gift for his wife for their 10th year anniversary. He ended up picking out a piece that said, my beautiful wife. And I said, anything else for you today? And he said, no, that's it for her, but I do want to make another purchase using a separate credit card. And could you possibly create a different account for me? And I said, sure, what are you looking for? And he said, do you have anything that says girlfriend? And I said, yes. And he said, perfect, I'll take it. And do you have anything that says happy one year anniversary to go with it? And I said, yes and he said perfect i'll take it so i boxed everything up all nice and i put them in their respected bags he had me mark a k for kristen on the bottom of his wife's bag and an l for laura on the bottom of his girlfriend's bag i put pretty bows on them i handed it to him i said they're gonna love it have a nice day and he said thank you and shit i just remembered that his wife's name is laura and his girlfriend's name is kristen i must have mixed up the bags oops Story time about how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I mean my literal pet cat got me grounded. So a little background information. I was 16 and I was a freshman in high school and my parents were extremely strict. Now, of course there was the usual no hanging out with boys, no hanging out with anybody on the weekdays. Well, my parents took it a step further. Actually, no, they took it like 10 miles further. I got my phone taken every night at six o'clock even on the weekends, and my friends were only allowed to come over for eight hours exactly on the weekends. And they had to have a ride to and from my house. Well, usually my friend group and I were never invited to any kind of parties, but this one girl who had just moved to our school, she was throwing a huge party and she invited everybody, not just the popular kids. So obviously my friends begged me to go. They were like, please, like we can sneak over there. Your parents go to bed early anyways. Like for part two. Part two about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, my best friends are begging me to come out of the house. They're like, listen, like, do whatever you have to to come to this party. This is the first and probably only party that we will ever be invited to in our entire lives. So at this point, I start planning to sneak out of my house. So my parents usually go to sleep at around 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, and they usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning. But since this party was on a Friday, obviously my parents aren't going to wake up at that time. They'll usually wake up around like maybe 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So this gave me a perfect amount of time to do what I needed to do, come back and not get caught. But just in case, I made sure to turn off any alarms on their phone. But I also had to make sure that I had a foolproof plan to get out of the house and get back in. Now, of course, I couldn't go through any of the doors in the house because of the stupid ring doorbell. But there was one thing that did work in my favor. So my dad had been slowly but surely installing the window security alarms. But he hadn't made it to my room yet, so I was good to sneak out of my window. And thankfully, my window was on the first floor. Like for part three. Part three about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, I had a foolproof plan to escape, okay? I was going to get out the window, and I was going to just crawl back in and act like nothing ever happened. But there was an issue with this, okay? My dad was supposed to fix my window because I somehow broke it. I don't even know how. But anytime that I go to put my window up, it just literally falls. And not only does it fall, it locks when it falls. And obviously, you can guess what will happen if it does fall. I won't be able to get back in the house, and I will somehow have to get in the house without my parents knowing, which is literally impossible. So I will be grounded for the rest of my life. 
So I was going to put a book between the window and the windowsill, but I didn't want it falling and making a lot of noise. So I decided to put a pillow there. So I snuck out of my house at 11 o'clock and I had the best time of my life, probably because that's the first and only time that I will ever be invited to any party. But fast forward, I go and I run to the side of the house to get into my window and of course the pillow is missing. And I'm looking around to see where the pillow went in my room and of course my cat is laying on it on the floor. So I tried messing with the window and then all of a sudden my parents walked in my room and saw me. This is why you should never play hide and seek. A mom decided to play hide and seek with her two kids. The mom began counting, ready or not, here I come. She begins searching the downstairs kitchen because she knows that they hide there every single time. As she's walking to the kitchen, she starts saying, hmm, I wonder where they are. She looks under the table and sees they aren't there, which is kind of odd. She knew they were too scared to go into the basement alone, but she decided to check anyway. They weren't there either. She began to panic. The mom then says, Jordan, Casey, come out now. Mommy's not playing anymore. There was no answer. Panic really begins to set in. She decides to call 911 and reaches an operator. She tells the operator what's wrong and the operator sends an officer to her house. Once the officer arrives, he says, don't worry, we will find them. As she's sitting in the living room, she hears giggling and laughing and hears a closet door slam upstairs. She sprints upstairs and says, Jordan, Casey, you worried me sick. She opened the closet door and nobody was there. While all of this is going on, she hears the doorbell ring. She runs downstairs and finds the officer holding Jordan and Casey. The officer says they were hiding in the shed out back. Then Jordan looks at mommy and says, why were you telling us to stay in the so last night I decided to go to the bar with my brother and his best friend and my brother's best friend was completely miserable the entire time because he did not want me to come. When we get there, he kind of goes off his own separate way. So I decide to let him be miserable and I go get drunk. And I'm sitting at the bar and I see a guy that I used to know back in high school. So we start talking and he's gay by the way, but I get a text. So I open up my phone and it's an unknown number and it says stop trying to make me jealous and at first because i'm drunk i cannot figure out who it is and i reply who is this and then the person replies back with don't touch him keep your hands off of him and when i turn to look i can see him staring at us and he looks like he's going to kill someone so i decide that i want to mess with him a little bit because he's been a dick to me since i got there so I respond back and I pretty much say, you don't even like me, so why do you care who I touch? And he pretty much responds with, I haven't been able to stop looking at you all night and it's driving me crazy. And because I'm drunk, I tell him that I want him to look at me, to which he responds with, don't push me, I'm close to my breaking point. I'm a bit overwhelmed, I'm a lot a bit drunk and I end up getting up to go to the bathroom and lo and behold, guess who follows me? And you'll never believe how my night ended. I caught my dad cheating with my best friend and he doesn't want me to tell my mom. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. My dad and I have never gotten along. He's the type of dad that whenever I bring my friends over, he's literally always flirting with them. He'll make sure to be home when he knows my friends are coming. He's really into bodybuilding so he's pretty fit. So he'll just walk out shirtless into the kitchen while my friends and I are having lunch. I'm constantly telling him to cover up because it's totally embarrassing. Two weeks ago I noticed something weird. My best friend was drinking a Starbucks in the kitchen and when I came into the kitchen I saw her and my dad quickly let go of their hands. Like they were holding hands. Of course they played it off and I didn't say anything. Our backyard has a pool house and that's usually where my dad hangs out. By the way, my mom is an amazing woman. She owns a Pilates studio and basically pays for everything. I go to the pool house and that's when I find my dad going down on my best friend. His head was up underneath her skirt. I literally vomited as soon as I saw it. Part two. That's when I see my dad's head underneath my friend's skirt. Because he was going down on her. I actually vomited right then and there. As I'm vomiting outside of the pool house, my dad runs over to me and says, What you saw is a mistake. And I say, Of course it was a mistake, because you're going to go rectify this right now. I handed him my cell phone so that he could call my mom. He grabbed my cell phone and threw it into the pool. And then my best friend comes out like nothing happened. He looks at me and says, Will you please just stop overreacting? It's not that big a deal. I grabbed her by her hair and threw her down on the floor. And then I just started attacking her. So angry at my dad, I was even angrier with her. How could she? My dad pulls me off of her and she starts confessing to everything. Apparently they've been doing it for a month. Whenever she comes to hang out with me, she'll stay in the pool house, hide in there for hours and wait for my dad to come home. He was never my best friend. By the way, my best friend and I are both 22. My dad is 47. Here's the worst part. He swore me to secrecy and I agreed. Now they just make out in front of me. Part three is up. My dad will just start making out with my best friend in front of me. At this point, he doesn't care. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. My mom has had a hard time. This would tear my mom apart. I told my dad that if he doesn't stop this, I'm going to have to move out of the house. This really woke him up, though. He told my best friend that he couldn't keep seeing her. And now she's going crazy. She won't stop calling his cell phone or mine. And she'll just show up to her house. Then I caught them doing it again. Of course, I threatened to move out again. Don't know how to handle this situation. What should I do?
I lied about how I spent New Year's Eve almost every year since I started dating my boyfriend. During college, I spent most of my New Year's Eves in Taipei. I would tell my parents I'd be having dinner with my sisters. Then I'd run off to buy cup noodles and pudding from the convenience store, park myself in front of my laptop, and video call my boyfriend from the US to have dinner with him virtually. But with the 16 hour time difference, I'd be eating at 8 o'clock at night and he'd be waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to hang out with me. I spent an hour or so talking to a half asleep boy, eating my favorite junk food until he got too tired and wanted to sleep again. After he'd hang up, I'd stare at the blank screen with a full heart. Even if we only got to talk for 15 minutes, the fact that he got up at an ungodly hour just so I could slurp noodles at him made me incredibly happy. So after our call ended, I'd get ready to go out to join the rest of my friends for a party at some club. We did this every year until he graduated from college and I graduated from my master's program. When we finally spent our first New Year's Eve together, we did so as newlyweds. People didn't want me and my boyfriend to date, when we first met. Three years ago today, I turned up to uni for the very first day. I'm doing acting. We sat down in a circle and we all like introduced ourselves. And this dude in the circle was like, hi, my name's Felix. And I was like, hey, Felix. And our head director or like head lecturer was like, all right guys, just a little PSA, like please do not date in the course. She was like, oh, because we're doing acting, like it's really awkward if you break up. You have to be really vulnerable with each other. Like we'll have kissing scenes and, you know, dating scenes and things like that. And I was like, girl, you're, you're a massive cock block right now. So I just tried to focus on like making friends. And I made a really good friend, Liam. We're still friends today. And he was like on day three, he was like, oh, come over to my house. And we'll go to like the toga party together. And like, I'll have a few people over. And if you know the toga party, it's like initiation. Like you dress up in like white sheets and like you go out clubbing. So Liam sends me his address and I'm like, Liam, you live a minute away from me. Like he lives so close. Awesome. And I ended up being the last one there, even though I was the closest um, because I was getting my glam on. I turn up and what do I know? Felix from the first day has moved in with Liam. I opened the door and I was like, oh, like, hello everyone. And then Felix just boldly says like, wow, Molly, you look so beautiful. I had never had someone so confidently and like outwardly in front of a whole group, like compliment me like that. I was like... Felix, what are you doing to me, man? Like, we get to the club and Felix and I kiss. On day three, even though our lecturer said not to. We, ah! Anyway, we shared an Uber home. And when it got to his house, he was like, and I was like, and then he was like, okay, bye. And I was like, ah. that was that pretty much. This is the crazy part. Then I'm on the bus to uni and it stops right near their house. And who jumps on the bus? Felix sees me and he's like, oh, hi. And then he sits like in a different seat. And I was like, Felix, you can sit next to me. Like, it's not weird. Like it's chill and he was like oh, okay and pretty much we discussed like oh it's not good for us to date like in the course like that was fun but whatever and then we turn up to class late together and everyone's like oh. sit down and we read tarot cards which was like something i'd never thought i'd be doing at uni but anyway he pulls soulmate and he like looks at me and i'm like oh God. it was just so like surreal but we were still best friends for like six months we still stuck to like not dating like our lecturer asked us not to them, we just couldn't, we couldn't help it. So after many bus rides and many study dates, we ended up dating and we're still dating now in our final year. So don't listen to those cock blocks. Love you guys, bye. When you go to sleep tonight, don't do what she did. Once there was a young woman named Alicia who moved into a very old house with her parents, but she could have never expected the horrifying things that this would lead to. After living in this house for a few weeks, things started becoming strange. Alicia noticed she was becoming weaker and feeling sick. Pretty soon she couldn't leave her bed and was asleep for most of the day. The doctors came to examine her and everyone wanted to find out what this mysterious sickness was, but no one had any answers until one day Alicia passed away while sleeping. Then after her funeral, her mother came home and with a broken heart began cleaning her room. That's when she noticed something strange about Alicia's pillow. There were two small red stains. She picked it up and realized the pillow was unusually heavy, so she called her husband to go look at it with her. Then Alicia's mother felt something inside the pillow move. Her father opened the pillow and took all the feathers out. There they saw something crawl out. It was a monstrous black spider. Night after night, as Alicia lay in bed, this huge spider had been slowly drinking all her blood through her pillow. You know I'm the face of the city, bitch. That's why you mad. You know how when you're younger, sometimes you don't realize how bad something is until you grow up? I've told this story before, but I feel like it's a good time for a refresh. If you're a younger girl, especially in high school, you need to hear this. When I was like 17, I was on a dating app, but I like lied and put my age as like 21 or something. But in my bio, I did write actually 17. Still a terrible idea, don't do that. But I wasn't hiding the fact that I was underage. And I ended up matching with this guy who I knew of, but I didn't actually know him. I knew people he knew, but and he was 21. He messages me and instantly I'm like, by the way, I'm 17. And he 
goes, that's okay with me if it's okay with you. Red flag number one. And then we start talking. It was fine. It was just like very casual conversation. It wasn't anything that serious. I wasn't using dating apps for like a date. I was using it just for fun. And then he followed me on Instagram. Literally, I'm not even exaggerating. Two seconds after he follows me, a random girl follows me and she's fo mutuals with him and she had like pictures up with him and stories up with him. Red flag number two. Then I asked him about it and he pulls the classic man move of, oh, that's just my ex. Like she's fucking insane. And she can't like let it go that we broke up. Red flag number three. Any guy who's that quick to call his ex-girlfriend insane. Also seven years later, I got confirmation that they were never actually broken up during that time. One night at like 2 a.m. calls me being like, Hey, like, do you want to go for a drive? Like, let me come pick you up. Guys, I had strict parents. Like, there was no way I was getting out of that house at 2 in the morning. Keep in mind, I had already said no to him multiple times, being like, listen, I got strict parents. I don't want to go, blah, blah, blah. And on the phone with me, he's going off about, Sahar, listen, I'm a really hot guy. I could really get anybody I want. So if you won't come for this drive for me, I could find about 10 other girls that would. I literally was like, okay, go with other girls. I'm good. And he wouldn't stop messaging me, so I had to tell him that me and my ex got back together so I couldn't talk to him anymore. I talked to some of my coworkers, they knew him and went to high school with him, and they were like, Sahar, he's fucking disgusting. You're not talking to him. He had like multiple charges pressed against him, and now that I'm 22, looking back, I'm like, I could never be with someone that young. That's gross. Girls, remember, there's a reason why they can't get girls their own age. I just flipped the switch.